Whenever people talk about the Oz films made prior to the more famous 1939 version, the 1925 film, also called The Wizard of Oz, is the one that most people think of. Makes sense. It does tell the most cohesive story out of all of them, and it feels like an actual movie, rather than a proof-of-concept novelty. However, this is without a doubt one of the strangest and most unfaithful adaptations of any book I have ever seen in my life. Generally, when a story works in one medium and it's beloved by a huge audience, it's a good idea to stick as closely to the source material as possible. We've seen plenty of deviations from the Oz stories, mostly from the author himself, so even he was not wanting to do things the exact same way. But the 1925 Wizard of Oz strips away pretty much everything you know about the Land of Oz in favor of a wacky slapstick comedy that has more to do with a Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, or Harold Lloyd movie than it does an Oz adaptation. I mentioned those three actors in particular because their comedies were extremely popular and influential during the silent era. The Gold Rush, The General, Safety Last, so many great comedies made during that time period that are still hilarious today. But imagine if one of those films was an adaptation of a beloved fantasy story like Alice in Wonderland. It'd be pretty weird, right? Well, this film is pretty weird, in that it has little of the weirdness that one would expect from the Land of Oz. In fact, the Land of Oz resembles a Central or Eastern European dictatorship more than it does a magical fantasy land. There are no supernatural elements to speak of outside of the occasional physics-defying slapstick gag. To give you an example, the villain's goons, they fly to Kansas in biplanes. Biplanes in Oz! The lead characters don't make it to Oz until halfway through the movie. And strangest of all, the Scarecrow, Tin Woodman, and Cowardly Lion are all normal humans in disguise, rather than anthropomorphic fantasy land creatures. Can you imagine if someone tried to adapt The Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, set them in contemporary times instead of a fantasy world, and made it more like a Seth Rogen comedy rather than an epic adventure story? That's essentially what we have here, and it's one of the most baffling creative decisions I've ever seen for a film in my life. Dorothy isn't even the main character. The Scarecrow is. Well, the farmhand who disguises himself as the Scarecrow. It's made even stranger by the fact that the film starts out with a little girl being read the story in a book, leading us to think that it'll be a straightforward adaptation when really, it's about as far removed from the book as could be. But does that make the movie bad? Eh, not necessarily. I wouldn't at all recommend this as a person's first exposure to The Land of Oz, but if you're a fan of silent comedies, you might be able to get into it. The energy level is very high. The stunts are pretty impressive, especially since this was in the era before stuntmen, let alone CGI. And it marks a very early appearance of Oliver Hardy, of Laurel and Hardy fame, which is pretty cool. It's not exactly a magical adventure, and there are a few, uh, casually racist moments that are all too common in pre-civil rights films. But if you're in the mood for a zany silent comedy that isn't from Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, or Harold Lloyd, I'd say check it out. We're almost out of the silent era, boys and girls, I promise. I know you're all wanting to revel in the sweet comfort of the 1939 classic, but stay with me just a little while longer. Something tells me it's just over the rainbow. What? What?